in rotating equipment, when you have a mechanical defect, such as unbalance or misalignment, looseness, those kinds of mechanical defects, um, that mechanical problem is translated into vibration. Something yeah. is moving. Yeah. The vibration is generally generated through the bearing, so we tend to, to place our sensors on the bearing. Um, it's the most direct path for that vibration to get into our monitor. Right. Um, but it's not always a bearing problem. It's something else maybe going on with that rotor or in another part of the machine Could that is trans it's or... transferred through the bearing. Right. So it's not always a bearing problem. It just tends to show up better in the bearing. So the more knowledge the customer has about that bearing, which, which they get us. from us, yeah, exactly. um, the better off they're going to be at this whole reliability Game. Yeah, and we've taken that condition monitoring expertise around the bearing and just built it out, you right. know, to the oil analysis and to the ultrasonics and the infrareds and the other things that we do to determine the health of a piece of equipment. A series of small events can add up to major catastrophes. Simple little things that go wrong. Um, you have to be on your toes all the time. And unfortunately, it, sometimes it takes a catastrophe, human nature being what it is, to really drive you to excel, to, to push that extra little inch to get to a, a very high state of safety and reliability. Yeah, exactly. This improved reliability will, will actually impact their environmental and safety performance Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. I mean, as we reduce the need for, uh, extend run lives and reduce the need for intrusive maintenance, that's usually where accidents happen, either during that process or during the startup after that process. We try to have an intelligent business discussions with intelligent business people and uh, allow them to make the, the right decisions for their particular circumstances. Right, and we can kind of move them out of this firefighting phase where we can start doing some root cause analysis and start eliminating some failures. Uh, I just don't think they have time to even think about those things now. It's like a doctor having to keep track of all the latest technologies and all the latest procedures and all the, the new information that is thrown at them every day. They don't have time to, to do that. They're focused on their job. It, it, they rely on vendors like us, like SKF, to come in and say, hey, here's yeah. here's what you're doing now, but here's what you could be doing a little bit better. And you know, as you look down the road, the idea of having a smart bearing that can tell you when it's having a problem, and that's the next logical step beyond yep. all this. And, and, and I that's know coming. That it's coming. It's, yeah. it's a matter of time, and there will be early adopters like any other technology. But I, I'm hopeful that, uh, and it won't. It probably won't fit every scenario, every situation out there. Right. But I'm, I'm anxious to see that in, in real life and, and out in the field working yeah, and see mind. how it goes. Yeah.